Welcome back. Here we go with chapter 24. There are three chapters left in uh, the story of Because of Winn Dixie. And uh, as we left off, um, you know, they're at the party and uh, now a big lightning and thunderstorm has hit and uh, Winn Dixie's off looking for, or excuse me, uh, Opal is off looking for Winn Dixie. Chapter 24. Me and the preacher started walking and calling Winn Dixie's name. I was glad it was raining so hard because it made it easy to cry. I cried and cried and cried. And the whole time I was calling for Winn Dixie. Winn Dixie, I screamed. Winn Dixie, the preacher shouted. And then he whistled loud and long, but Winn Dixie didn't show up. We walked all through downtown. We walked past the Dewberry's house and the Herman W. Block Memorial Library and Sweetie Pie's Yellow House and Gertrude's Pets. We walked out to the Friendly Corners trailer park and looked underneath our trailer. We walked all the way out to the Open Arms Baptist Church of Naomi. We walked past the railroad tracks and right on down Highway 50. Cars were rushing past us and their taillights glowed red like mean eyes staring at us. Daddy, I said, Daddy, what have you got run over? Opal? The preacher said, we can't worry about what might have happened. All we can do is keep looking. We walked and walked. And in my head, I started on a list of 10 things that I knew about Winn Dixie. Things I could write on big old posters and put up around the neighborhood. Things that would help people look for him. Number one was that he had a pathological fear of thunderstorms. Number two was that he liked to smile using all of his teeth. Number three was he could run fast. Number four was that he snored. Number five was that he could catch mice without squishing them to death. Number six was that he liked to meet people. Number seven, was that he liked peanut butter. Number eight was he couldn't stand to be left alone. Number nine was he liked to sit on couches and sleep in beds. Number 10 was that he didn't mind going to church. I kept on going over and over the list in my head. I memorized it in the same way I had memorized the list of 10 things about my mama. I memorized it so if I didn't find him, I would have some part of him to hold on to. But at the same time, I thought of something I had never thought of before. And that was that a list of things couldn't even begin to show somebody the real Winn Dixie. Just like a list of 10 things couldn't ever get me to know my mama. And thinking about that made me cry even more. Me and the preacher looked for some time, and finally, he said we had to quit. But Daddy, I said, when Dixie's out there somewhere, we can't just leave him. Opal, the preacher said, we have looked and looked, and there's only so much looking we can do. I can't believe you're going to give up, I told him. India, Opal, the preacher said, rubbing his nose. Don't argue with me. I stood and stared at him. The rain had let up some. It was mostly a drizzle now. It's time to head back, the preacher said. No, I told him. You go ahead and go, but I'm going to keep on looking. Opal, the preacher said in a real soft voice, it's time to give up. You always give up, I shouted. You're always pulling your head inside your stupid old turtle shell. I bet you didn't even go out looking for my mama when she left. I bet you just let her run off too. Baby, the preacher said, I couldn't stop her. I tried. Don't you think I wanted her to stay too? Don't you think I miss her every day? He spread his arms out wide and then dropped them to his sides. I tried, he said. I tried. Then he did something I couldn't believe. He started to cry. The preacher was crying. His shoulders were moving up and down, and he was making snuffly noises. And don't believe that losing Winn Dixie doesn't upset me as much as it does you, he said. I love that dog. I love him too. Daddy, I said. I went and wrapped my arms around his waist. He was crying so hard he was shaking. It's all right, I told him. It's okay. Shh. I said it to him like he was a scared little kid. Everything will be okay. We stood there hugging and rocking back and forth. 
and after a while the preacher stopped shaking, and I still held on to him, and I finally got the nerve to ask the question he wanted to ask. Do you think my mom is ever going to come back? No, the preacher said. No, I do not. I've hoped and prayed and dreamed about it for years, but I don't think she'll ever come back. Well, Gloria says that you can't hold on to anything, that you can only love what you've got while you've got it. She's right, the preacher said. Gloria Dump is right. I'm not ready to let Win Dixie go, I said. I had forgotten about him for a minute, what with thinking about my mama. We'll keep looking, said the preacher. The two of us will keep looking for him. But do you know what? I just realized something, India Opal. When I told you your mama took everything with her, I forgot one thing, one very important thing that she left behind. What, I asked. You, he said. Thank God your mama left me you. And he hugged me tighter. I'm glad I've got you too, I told him. And I meant it. I took hold of his hand and we started walking into town, calling and whistling for Winn-Dixie the whole way. That's the end of that chapter.